You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey. Unless you're a brand new listener to the show, you know that I always tell you what you're going to get out of the show so you can do this weird thing that we don't do often enough. You could decide whether it's worth your time and energy to consume a piece of content. I am asking you for about an hour of your life right now. Yeah, You might be doing something else that's also valuable. I encourage you to stack things like that. Um, but honestly, if this is of no interest to you, then seriously, there's almost a thousand other episodes and I'm queuing them all up so you know what you're going to get. On this show, you're going to meet a Johns Hopkins trained spinal surgeon who is moving away from cutting on spines because she's found stuff that works way better. You're going to learn about how to tie together things to take care of your spine. And you might say, I don't care about my spine. My back doesn't hurt. The odds are that over the course of your life, there will be meaningful amounts of time where your back does hurt, whether it's because you fall off your mountain bike, because you overdid that rainbow pose and yoga, or because you ate something that caused inflammation. And it turns out that your vertebra are probably some of the weakest links that feel inflammation first. And we have a world-class expert on to talk about that and some really cool new things, in fact, something called the aqua method, which is a brand new treatment that includes photo biomodulated PRP with functional movement and functional tissue mobilization. And our innovator and guest today has been on the show before. She has seen the inside of my spinal cord and who knows what else. I was unconscious for a lot of that. None other than Dr. Marcella Madera who is a full-on conventional doctor neurosurgeon who has switched to functional medicine to get better results. Marcella, my friend, thank you for being on the show again today. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure and honor to be here. Do your surgeon colleagues in their really expensive German sports cars, <laughs> um, do they look down on you for having gone functional? Are, are you a pariah? You know... I was really, really fortunate to be able to start my integrative, functional, holistic practice alongside my conventional practice for a period of time as I was figuring out what it was. And my partners at the time were cocking their heads like, huh, I wonder what that is. And over time, I have been really blessed to have received referrals from them now that I'm fully in my integrative holistic space and doing biologic and cell medicine. And what we're finding is that patients really want the truth about back pain. They really want to know the root cause. And when they go in asking a lot of questions that my colleagues are not answering or they they think well maybe marcella has an answer why don't you go check that out and i i am myself surprised and honored when it continues to happen that i get their referrals so what happens here is when a conventional spine doc comes across someone who doesn't get better and doesn't respond right and is the so-called hard case they send them to you even though you're not doing the, let me just fuse your entire spine. Don't worry, it won't hurt kind of practice, right? Correct, 100%. What percentage of people come across back pain in their life? I made up some statistics earlier, but <laughs> you probably actually know. Um, it is between 80 and 100%. Um, I think the last time I looked at that, it was, it, it's, it's close to 100 um, because it's so varied. I mean, again, the root cause thing, you know, Conventional medicine doesn't really know fully. We know some things. We know the very obvious red flags, tumors, infections. But the broad, broad swath of people that have back pain, um, which is pretty much everybody's going to experience at least one episode at some time in their life, um, we don't really know fully what's causing it. Or at least we're uh, we're digging into it now at what we're doing here at my practice. But. It, it can be really debilitating. Um, when I was uh, when I was in my early twenties, I felt like there was a candle burning between my shoulder blades all the time um, because I had a rib head out and it would just go out. It turns out that was caused largely by my environment and my diet. But I, I just for five years straight, it was just constant mean pain, and I thought that was really bad, and it was. And then, oh, maybe three four years ago, one of our pigs had escaped. Yes, the life of a farmer is tough. 
and we're working on getting back in and I'm pushing on this pig and suddenly it just moves. And so I'm going to face plant in the mud. Fortunately, there's no video of this. And I'm like, okay, I got this. So I kicked one of my legs back really strong to counterbalance me. And I sprained my spine when I did that. And I didn't know I, I sprained it. But for the next eight months, it was like the kind of pain that makes you turn kind of green. And you guys didn't see it on the podcast here, but sometimes I was wearing like a back brace and I mean, just walking, riding a bike, anything. It, it, was, it was nasty. And that's the sort of thing that can just hurt forever. What would you do with someone who sprains their spine like that? Because this happens great, to a lot of people. Great question. It happens to a lot of people. And one of the one of the key interesting things that I discovered in my conventional practice was there are people who can have an event like that and they're down for a couple of days, they take some Advil and then they're back to their life. And it, their body's natural healing systems are robust and they just go on and they're fine. And then there are other people that that happens to and it never gets better or they um, it gets better for a little while or they try this, they try that. And it's just this ongoing thing. So um, in our practice, when we have an acute uh, injury, and sometimes we'll see people right away when it happens, sometimes they've done other things before they come. Um, the first thing we look at is overall body inflammation and where they're at with their whole health. And so my um, uh, patient base is broad. We have some people who are biohackers like you who are doing everything tip top, you know, anti-inflammatory diet, great exercise, um, stacking different things at home, cold, you know, plunges and all different kinds of things. And then we have other patients who have never heard that your food can increase inflammation in your body and can cause you to have pain. So we do a history and we discuss deeply what are their different things that could be contributing. We look at what their mind-body practices are like. We look at how much stress is in their life. We look at what was going on in their life at the time of the injury and why the injury may have happened. And we look at, again, diet, as I just mentioned, and then uh, put that all together and come up with a treatment plan that is specific to where they're at in terms of their whole health. And that's step one. Now, your clinic is, is called Austin Integrative Spine. But I went to see you recently not for my spine, which fortunately fully recovered. You know, Thank you, stem cells and biohacking and red lights and all the crazy stuff that I do. Um, but um, I had surgery, and I'm still working on the documentary about how to heal really rapidly. I had surgery on my foot for a really old yoga injury that I just never actually took care of. There's a classical functional movement problem in, in the world of biohacking. You don't make enough energy in your cells to do stuff. That's a core, like that's one of my big contributions, I, I think, is just highlighting mitochondria in the brain and all these things. But even if you make enough energy, if you still walk like a duck, the way that I did when I was young and probably still do to a certain point, you're not using that energy to move your hardware right. So when you get the system right, your cells make energy with near perfect efficiency, and then you move your body like a martial artist or a dancer with near perfect efficiency, right? And that means tons of extra electrons that would have been used wastefully are now available for, I don't know, folding proteins, detoxing, thinking good thoughts, um, restraining the urge to strangle any politicians near you. All of those things are, are really, really important parts of it. I miss functional movement, um, and I'm still working on that on a regular basis. So when I went to see to see you, I'm like, yeah, it's Austin Integrative Spine. We know each other, but I, d I wasn't interested in my spine. You actually did stuff on my leg. And the method that you're, uh, you're just pioneering is called the aqua method, something you created. So it's not a spinal thing. It's a whole body functional movement thing. Tell me what the aqua method is. I think I know because I just did it and it was really yeah. cool, but walk me through it. Yes. So we came up with the term aqua um, to really give a description of what we're trying to create in the body, and that is more fluidity. And also... Um, water, aqua, is pure. It's intense at times, depending on the form. And it is soothing at times, depending on the form. And that is how our treatment goes. Um, so it, we've divided it into four sections. And I can go through those one at a time, or I can go through them and, and we can pause in between. Um, the first section is what we call reveal. 
And the whole treatment is composed of me and two additional practitioners. One is a doctor of chiropractic medicine, incredibly gifted in functional tissue mobilization. And then the other is a personal trainer, elite performance uh, trainer as well with a rehab uh, capability and also a massage therapist. So all of that wrapped up into one guy and that's Matt Lindemood, uh, Dr. Joey Matina and Matt Lindemood. And so in the first phase of the Aqua Method called Reveal, you get the three of us in a room together with our varied expertise looking at your whole body. Um, looking at, so for you, you have a toe that has been you know, injured abnormal for a significant amount of time. And what we see with your movement is you have these patterns that have developed over a long period of time of dealing with this toe. And that pattern is across your entire body. It's not just the toe, as you said, it's the knee, it's the hip, it's the core, it's the back. So the three of us are looking at your structure, what I know about the anatomy. We're looking at your movement patterns, and then we're looking at what tissues are involved, putting that picture together to make a treatment plan for the next phase. Okay, so reveal is figuring out what's going on that isn't, it hurts here, let's cut that out. 100%, okay. 100%. I, I like that. So reveal is the first step, and yep. that's a functional movement, elite movement uh, analysis. So Correct. what we figured out when I was there is that I wasn't firing uh, certain muscles in my shin because my body learned not to do that probably when I was you know, in my late teens, early 20s because of, of an earlier injury. Right. So then the body says, I'm going to protect this and it never stops protecting. Yes. Right. And physical therapy yes. is supposed to do that, but it doesn't really. So you guys are able to spot that for me. All right. So yes. that was the reveal. And then what's okay. the next step of this? So the next step is called restore. And in this phase, we do the um, photobiomodulated platelet rich plasma treatment, which is an IV. We draw your blood, spin it down, get the PRP fraction shine a very specialized laser with a very specialized waveform through that to activate the PRP. And we can talk more about the science of what's going on there and then some basic science of what might be going on there as well. Um, then we re-inject that activated PRP into your IV and then shine the same very specific laser over the different body parts of interest that we have identified in the reveal phase. At the same time that we're shining the laser to target the anti-inflammatory effects of the PRP, we are also, with uh, Dr. Matina, doing that functional tissue mobilization. So you're getting the benefit of a molecular biologic treatment of the activated PRP and the tissue compression pushing out the inflammatory um, molecules through the lymphatic system and creating another way for the biologic activity to be drawn to that place as he's doing the tissue mobilization. So it's a, it's a combined effect of a biologic going in through the, through the veins, as well as the external compression and um, just, and, and frankly, the healing um, uh, nervous system changes that happen with manual treatment is very powerful at one time. Okay. And the idea of a special laser could be <laughs> triggering for some people, say, but that's not totally. how it works. Totally. But the reality is that <laughs> photobiomodulation, 25 years ago, you could only do it on racehorses. And the history of all the cool biohacks, if it wasn't from like the Russian military in the 50s and 60s, a lot of it really did come from racehorses. Uh, because you have a multi-million dollar thing there, little injury, any little performance. So my first medical laser um, was only approved for use on horses and it fixed my um, whiplash in oh, like two or three sessions. Uh, just uh, amazing stuff. That was why I bought it. It was actually cheaper than going to a chiropractor a hundred times. And by the way, I support <laughs> chiropractors, but the ones with lasers are my favorites. So lasers just work. LEDs work. True Light, my light therapy company has all kinds of stuff. Um, like actually it's probably off camera. I have our new, cl <laughs> our new clinical device right here that I'm dropping on the floor. <laughs> so what's going on is there is tons of science to say that that's real. What Marcella's got um, with the aqua method is a very unusual thing. And I've actually seen photos of, you know, cells lining up and all sorts of crazy stuff happening. So I'm just going to say that 
more than passes the credibility test at this point. You can buy FDA approved lasers for use on humans with approved claims. And it's just, this is a new world. And it wasn't always like this. It did go through a big phase of resistance from doctors like Marcella, whatever, 20 years ago or something, but it's just real. How did you become convinced that this laser treated PRP was any different than PRP where you, you know, blow fairy kisses on it? <laughs> Great question. Um, in my training to use this new technology with the creator of it, we experienced some really profound healing examples when I was in, working with him with patients. Um, one particular example is a patient who had a, who came to me with a herniated disc, a lumbar disc, um, and was pretty far along in his healing process. He had improved from the beginning um, in terms of his symptoms, but his scan was very clearly surgical. He had a very large disc. He still had symptoms. That guy would walk into any surgeon's office and be offered an operation. And that's not wrong. I mean, it was totally a reasonable thing, but he was very convinced that he wanted to try absolutely everything first. And he had an incredible result with one treatment with the with the inventor of this laser, Dr. Todd Ovakaitis. So I, in my initial experience with it, I saw impressive results, not just with back pain. Um, that doctor has also studied uh, cardiomyopathy in uh, patients that need uh, cardiac transplants and shown improvement with this laser activated PRP um, on cardiac output. And I mean, I've seen those results. So um, it, there's a myriad of data that he's been collecting. For, for several years. And so I reviewed that and then had some hands-on experience. And then once I started using it myself, we've now, um, with the Aqua Method, we've treated several patients who have been recommended surgery um, and we're getting them better without surgery. So I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> um, I am not opposed to surgery. However, it should be a last line, not a first line. And I yeah. regret to this day, the three knee surgeries that I had because none of them were necessary knowing what I know now about functional movement. And in this podcast, guys, you're going to learn about functional movement and you're going to learn about some new stuff that's possible. You don't necessarily have to do everything that we talk about in the aqua method in order to get some results. In fact, if most listeners just said, you know, I'm going to go find a functional movement person and I'm gonna do five sessions, it's gonna completely change the quality of your life. It's that big of a thing because you just don't know the muscles that are turned off. And in sometimes one session, you can activate a muscle and all of a sudden your brain's like, oh, I didn't know I had that. And then it's available to you. It, it's really weird. Yoga can kind of do it, but it takes a long time. On functional movement, people are very, very powerful. And what you're doing that I haven't seen before with the Aqua Method is having that functional awareness as you're guiding the cells and as the body is in massive healing and transformation mode, rather than just, oh, body, heal what you know you've got. Like, maybe we could show you what yes. you've got so the body will then heal the things that need it. And that's a yes. new innovation. So, so given that preamble, um, what is the cost of the Aqua Method? Like, where does it start? Uh, 20,000 is the start, and that is a three-day immersive experience. Uh, we do the PBM PRP on the first day, um, and there's also a mind-body-spirit component, which we can dig into. Um, the second day, and so there's uh, PBM PRP, mind-body-spirit, functional uh, tissue mobilization, functional movement. That's all day one. Then day two and day three, we continue with the uh, functional tissue mobilization, the laser, and the mind-body-spirit decoding piece. Um, so again, first day we do the PBM PRP, and the second two days we continue everything else. And then after that, we also include two more sessions uh, via Zoom with our functional uh, or with our um, gifted uh, rehab and movement specialist trainer. So it's not just those days that you're here with us in the office. We really empower you to carry it forward, teach you how to maintain your results in your own environment. So, so this is three full days with two MDs and a high-end functional trainer, uh, which is why it's, um, it's you know, a meaningful amount of money. You can use HSPs and HSAs for this, I'm guessing. In the US, yeah. these are the health savings accounts. And yeah, it's not insurable can. though, right? Right. So no insurance, but you can use your HSA. And um, just for um, clarity, it's a MD, a DC, a doctor of chiropractic. Okay, thank you. Um, and then a trainer. Yeah. 
elite. One thing I totally them. love is how like real MDs like to talk down to naturopaths and chiropractors. Like, do they teach you that in medical school, Marcella? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just you know, actually, I mean, they don't teach it obviously, but there is an undercurrent <laughs> and it's unfortunate because I can tell you, I mean, Dr. Harry is my, he's like my, my, one of my earliest mentors and I adore him and, you know, he's a naturopath and I've gotten incredible knowledge base from, this, this from my Harry colleagues. Adelson, who's been on the show lots of times, right? Yes. He's one of the, yeah. the early stem cell innovators um, yes. uh, who I, I see quite often as well. So yes. um, a, a mutual friend and uh, and source of knowledge. So I was just teasing you. Um, my wife <laughs> is a medical doctor as well. And there's always this, well, yes. I, I went to school for longer than they did. And they're like, yeah, but we actually treat people and you just give them drugs. So it's a longstanding um, friendly rivalry that sometimes is unfriendly when the American Medical Association, which is basically the trade union for doctors, when they get involved and try and destroy acupuncture and chiropractic. Guys, there's room for everyone. Uh, there's 100%. lots and lots of people who are not well, and there's lots of ways to fix them, and we can all just chill. So you're actually very, very open to that. I was just putting words in your mouth because that's my <laughs> latest hobby. It's all good. We're, we're in a, a space of collaboration, and that uh, one of my, uh, or my trainer actually introduced me to the Medici Effect, that wonderful book that talks about um, great ideas come at very, very, from very people getting together from very, very different perspectives. And that's what we've created with this process. There are a few people from the Upgrade Collective saying, can you do this remotely? I, I would say it wouldn't even be possible. No. <laughs> I mean, there's injections no. and spinning of blood and uh, lasers no. do not shoot through Zoom. Um, Ask you can me in remote. 20 years. We'll, we'll do there it. you go. That's a goal. Thank you for the question. Your, your iPhone <laughs> will be implanted and have a little glands to secrete 3D printed molecules. It's going to be kind of weird, especially if either uh, <laughs> Apple or Facebook is in charge or Microsoft <laughs> or Google. Geez, we're screwed no matter what we do. We could do it in um, the metaverse, maybe. I don't know. <sighs> and is this kind of laser something that anyone would buy or could buy at home, or is this specifically for treating blood and tissues? Great question. Um, right now, it is extremely limited. I think there are 10 or fewer practitioners in the world with it, um, we, and we're very grateful to have one. Um, the creator of it is working on a way to have a higher number of practitioners have the ability to have it. Um, it has to just do, has to do with the optics and how specialized it is and being able to build multiple ones. So right now, very limited. There's also a whole bunch of medical devices that are out there where, uh, you know, it's just not reasonable. There's a lot of the stuff you can use for your skin, it's it starts at $150,000 and you go yeah. somewhere and you use it. And this is that kind of laser. Um, for most home therapy, um, LEDs work really well, especially when they're well made. That's the whole reason I started True Light. Um, but they don't do what this does. Like this is a this is a medical laser versus uh, something you could use at at home for inflammation. Right. And okay, so you do that, and you also do some energy medicine work. That's that's pretty out there. I mean, you're like I'm, I'm holding space, and there's some. <laughs> is there a trauma tied in? So tell me about some of the woo that's in here, because I actually think yes. it makes a huge yeah. difference. Yes, thank you for the question. So um, I have an extensive uh, history of studying uh, ancient Chinese energy technique. Um, it's Energy for Success, Dr. Barry Morgillon, who I know you've interviewed several times. This was and the first so, podcast he's ever been on, by the way. Oh, that will, that's even better. There you go, yeah, Dr. <laughs> um, Dr. B. Dr. B. So I, I started studying under him uh, personally, just for my own growth, um, almost eight years ago now. And over time, I got such great benefit from it myself that I started introducing it to my patients who were interested in mind-body optimization. And so over time, that evolved into adding some of those practices to our treatments. And so as it exists right now, as part of the Aqua Method, what we do is as soon as a patient arrives, we have them do a guided visualization or breathing exercise. So they really get their mind and body ready, um, get in that calm nervous system. You know, there's always, even when we're talking about something wonderful and healing, there's anxiety before you have a procedure. And so we really try to create a peaceful environment for the person to get ready to accept the treatment. We also include a goal writing session as part of the treatment. So it's not just, I want my knee pain to go away. It's like, okay, if you had your knee better than you could imagine, if your knee was perfect, 
What does that mean for your life? What would you imagine yourself doing? How would that support you in whatever goals you have in your life? And um, Amy uh, McAbeer, who works with us, who's our um, uh, chief uh, gui uh, guidance person for this process, um, she has a master's in health education. She has a Reiki experience. She has energy for success experience. She's a wide variety of mind, body, spirit um, abilities. She walks you through what you're trying to get out of procedure beyond just pain. And that is one of the goal writing practices, one of the Chinese energy things. And then in addition to that, during the procedure, we read aloud your goals as we're activating the PRP. And during the restore phase, as well as the revitalize phase over the next two days, when we're doing the functional tissue mobilization with Dr. Matina, and as I'm shining the laser, we are talking through a possible psychologic root, psychological root of what is going on with you. And this is a process called biologic decoding. And my interest in this came from over many, many years in my conventional practice, everybody knows when you have a stress in your life, something hurts. And you might have an old injury that perks back up, or you might have something new that happened. It just happened to happen at the same time as you were going through this like massive breakup or the same time a loved one dies. You know, the next month you have this, you know, you get a cold, for example, your, your body reacts to psychological stress. And this is something that I knew for a long time instinctively. And then I found that there is actually a, a field of um, somewhat esoteric medical science that has studied this. And so I've, we've incorporated this discussion during the treatment. So by the end, the patient has experienced a release of whatever that thing possibly that was contributing, um, as well as an action plan for in the future, how to take what we discovered to make it work for them. Um, I really appreciate that about the the Aqua method. And again, if you're listening to this going, wait a minute, I have a Johns Hopkins trained <laughs> neurosurgeon who is licensed to go inside your brain uh, with an egg beater if necessary, you know, whatever <laughs> oh, you think is medically required, <laughs> who's talking about this stuff. Yeah. Uh, any massage therapist will tell you, just take the average person, especially women, but it's true for men and women, and work the hips really well. And people start crying for no reason, right? Because we store emotions, especially in our hip joints. Why? Who the hell knows? The human operating system is still largely opaque to us for where we're sitting. But there's two people, one Western, one uh, more esoteric, that support what you're doing here, aside from Dr. B, who's a UCLA surgeon and Chinese energy master. But what is Dr. Sarno um, from Harvard who wrote a very famous book about pain? And he's well known for taking people who've been in chronic intractable pain for years, he'll talk to them for an hour and their pain is gone forever. Now, if that's possible for even a dozen people, there is something else going on than you know, a deficiency in opiates and surgery. It, it's just how it is. And uh, he's, he's got really fantastic evidence, like clinical trials for uh, what he does. And so there's one proof point for you. The other one is more personal development, but Louise Hay has a, a series of books that say, oh, if you have pain here, look at these emotions. And then you do trauma release work or emotional work on those. And sometimes we get into that at 40 Years of Zen, my neuroscience practice. And wow. There you go. Again, you see these weird results. And why, you know, if your knee hurts, does it mean, you know, mommy didn't love me? I don't remember what knee pain particularly means, but there's some kind of a mapping and you just look there and you might find something or that might not be why. But the idea that you're taking functional movement, which is its own beast, and this energetic, hey, like maybe there's something else going on here that's environmental, um, not physical environmental, but energy environment. And just saying, let's throw everything at it all at the same time while you're in a massive healing thing from the laser and the activated PRP cells. This um, is exactly the biohacking approach. The, what you learned in med school would have been, well, let's test the energy. Let's test um, whether functional movement works and let's test whether the, the activated PRP works. And well, none of them worked. I guess you're you're sick for life. But instead, you're saying let's throw everything at it that might be in there, and that's what I do with right. all the stuff that made me better. So right. kudos for being an MD who broke through that that single cause dogma and religion that's driving a lot of big pharma and a lot of 
Western medicine, where there must be one thing, there is no proof that it must be one thing, none whatsoever. We just make that assumption and then proceed as if that's the way the world was. That's just a false lens. So you, you totally uh, broke through that, which is, which is really cool. And, and you can feel it when you go in to do it. It's not like a normal procedure. I've had probably more stem cells than most people alive, if not anyone alive at this point. And what I really see um, is you go in there and it doesn't look like a normal procedure because you really have you know, people meditating and people, oh, you can move this the right way and what feeling is coming up here? It's, it's a different beast. That's why the Aqua Method was worth a show because it's really cool. Um, I'm seeing a couple of questions here. Um, old spinal cord injuries. What happens if you Thank apply you. this to one of those? Yeah, great question. Um, so the results that we're seeing with this activated PRP in spinal cord injury have been really impressive. I will say incomplete injuries, meaning um, compl a complete injury is where at the level of the lesion, there's no motor sensory function. An incomplete lesion is where there is some. And even if it's small, um, we are seeing a stronger result in the completes, I'm sorry, a stronger result in the incompletes than the completes. That said, um, we are at about, an, I would think about an 85% response rate um, in all comers. So there are some, it, then what that response is, is variable. So in our completes, it might be just a sensory change. Um, in our incompletes, we've had people that, you know, 10 years out from an injury have done everything else, um, have had iterative progress along the way. And then they get this procedure and they have a big jump in their recovery. And we see that over and over with the incompletes. Um, it's a, it's a very nuanced discussion. It's very patient specific. It's very injury specific. Um, but we do have a, a series of spinal cord patients that we're actually thrilled uh, to hopefully present to the um, conventional medical community once the data is is fully collected. So thank you for the question. So you're, you're only getting an 85% uh, response in people Meaning. with spinal cord injury. That, that's like a B. <laughs> that's not even an A, Marcel. I thought you were like this, you know, board certified spinal genius and you're only getting a B? Yep. yep. And, and there are some non-responders. And I, and I think that's, that's really, yeah. really you know, important to say, but, but honestly, for people that have nothing else, it's, it's freaking over the top. Uh, we're over the <laughs> top and happy about it. That's unprecedented compared to anything else you've done as a surgeon, right? Yeah. For, for a non, yeah. Cause these are patients that yeah. are, are, are past their surgical. Most patients uh, when I have a spinal cord injury, they've had surgery, you know, at the time of their injury appropriately to stabilize the spine. And so what we're tackling is the, the, the ongoing, um, lack of neurologic recovery. And I will say too, this is not a one and done thing. It's not, we do one procedure and they're, you know, running a marathon. It's a, it's a progress, a process. You know, a lot of our patients end up having multiple procedures. Um, so it, that's important to understand. The more severe, the, the more we end up having to, to move forward. And this is new, you know, we're still in the data collection phase. I, I'm still stuck on the fact that you actually use the word frickin in a conversation about <laughs> lasers. So we have frickin lasers. Okay. Do you know how cool that is, Marcella? You, oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my life now. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun around here. <laughs> I, I can, uh, I definitely saw that when I went in uh, to get the aqua method done. And um, it's, it, it's an example of, of what's possible because you could say, okay, this is expensive, but how much would you bill for a full-on spinal surgery for one of these people? Yeah, great question. I mean, you know, we could get into a whole discussion of like, where does the money come from when you when you use insurance and how much does it actually cost? Um, but yeah. certainly, uh, you know, a lumbar fusion and several of our patients that we have treated have been quoted elsewhere that they need a lumbar fusion. The standard cost to the system of a lumbar fusion is at least $100,000. Maybe you can get it down if they're in an outpatient surgery center and you do something minimally invasive. Um, for a lumbar decompression, that might be, you know, thirty to 50000 um, And again, you can get it lower if there are certain things you can do. So, um, you know, this is in terms of cost, we're probably on par with the lowest price of a, mid, a minimally invasive surgery in terms of cost to the system. Um, but I mean, cost to you and your body and the invasiveness, it's, it, that's a no brainer. It's, it's way, way, way less. 
So, so this is running around 20% the cost of a common spinal procedures. And at the very cheapest minimal spinal procedure in the West, this is on par with that. But you only have this 85% response sort of thing. It takes, oh, usually, it used to take like a generation of doctors dying. So there's like a 25-year cycle. But with social media and all this, I think it's down to about seven years where things like light therapy can become commonly accepted, where you go back seven, 10 years, it was only crazy people. So we're tightening the cycle. And part of the role of this show in, in my work, just writing books and all this, say, look, you know, this is real. It's just happening. You just don't know about it because the information isn't distributed. So you're doing something new and special uh, by bringing functional movement in with this. Now, you talked about reveal and restore, the first two parts of Aqua Method, okay. but there's two more. What is revitalize? Yeah, so Revitalize is really the addition of the movement to now a system that is different. And so to recap, in Restore, we're using the laser-activated PRP, the functional tissue mobilization. Those things together are creating more fluidity in the tissue, and they're washing out inflammation, and they're adding the healing capacity of the laser-activated PRP. What that does is creates a new baseline in which you can add movement. So we're creating a space where movement patterns now that are better for you, that are more like your body was intended to move, are able to get in there and we do it right away. So immediately after we finish the um, Dr. Matina and myself working together, then Matt works with you to give you an intro into some movements to let your nervous system feel safe and better doing movements that you didn't do before. So in the restore piece, we're like resetting the nervous system. Um, another part of it is washing out neurotransmitter signals that are that are causing pain. Usually after restore, people feel uh, somewhat better right away. And then we're adding in revitalize. We're adding movements that you're able to do that you couldn't do before to set it in in a more uh, normal physiologic state. And then we do that same process with the laser, Dr. Matina working on you in the tissue, and then the movement afterwards. We do that again two more times. That's the, the second two days with Revitalize. And so on those second two days, you actually get a longer training session and the movement takes, the, um, takes a bigger role as your brain is sort of able to take in a lot of new information on those second two days. So then what is Revel, the final step? Because you got four R's in the Aqua Method. Yes, thank you. So Revel has several key pieces. And one of the things um, that I want to add about Revitalize is that we're, we're continuing the mind, body, spirit, the biologic decoding during those second two days. So that by the time we get to Revel, we're able to put it all together and really celebrate what we learned and teach you how to take it forward. So part of the biologic decoding and that psychological discussion is we give you a very specific few sentences that encapsulate what you've learned about your body that are positives to take forward to reinforce those new neural pathways. Um, so we're in Revel, we're celebrating, we're teaching you how to take it forward. And then also there's two additional movement sessions that happen remotely in the first two weeks. It's very important that we get them accomplished in the first two weeks to really um, dial in that movement in your own environment, in your own space, so you can continue to do it yourself going forward. So we're celebrating, plus we're teaching you how to continue to make it stick and move forward. One of the things that I would love to see more of in the world at large, and, and I'm speaking in part to the, the thousand or so Human Potential Institute coaches um, that, um, that have gone through my program, um, but just out there, all the people are in caregiving professions. The hardest part with something like the Aqua Method is you go through, you have these amazing results, and then you're supposed to do some kind of movements like three times a week, but you don't really actually do it. There's a lot of friction, and accountability is a major part of it. So if if you're a coach, or you don't, you're not a coach, but you're looking for a coach, find a coach, the Human Potential Institute's a good place to do that, and just say, look, I got this cool video when I did the Aqua method with Marcella. Um, but I, I want you to like on our sessions, either track whether I did it or just make me do it when we're on a Zoom session. And that really changes the results. You can be one of those people who says, I will self-motivate for everything. 
I'm just going to tell you, it comes at a cost. Using willpower to do stuff is dumb. Um, having a coach who helps you write down your goals, which helps in and of itself, and then a coach who just holds you accountable to your goals so you don't have to hold yourself accountable, uh, you might find amazing results. So I'm, uh, I haven't had as many follow-ups as I would have liked, mostly because I'm bad at scheduling stuff um, with, with Matt. And I would just say, anytime you're doing a movement practice, you're supposed to do some yourself. Do it with a friend, do it with an accountability partner. It's, it's a massive change. Uh, and if you're a member of, I don't know, like maybe... Uh, the Upgrade Collective, uh, my mentorship group, uh, we hold each other accountable. We have weekly coaching calls. We bring in experts like you who will give a, a lecture. And then we actually have accountability calls afterwards so we can talk about how it's working because um, it's much easier to do this in a community. So if you get specialized knowledge, work with a specialized person to help you. And if it's general functional movement knowledge, you can actually do that uh, with friends. And I want you to teach something that everyone can do, even if they never come to Austin to see you. So tell me yeah. something like, I don't know, a breathing exercise or a movement exercise, something useful. Okay. Um, so we can do, we can do this as a combo. So um, part of this is an ancient Chinese energy practice that um, has these healing vibrations uh, from the Dr. Morgulin uh, energy for success paradigm. And then part of this is the functional movement and how to stabilize your body. So um, one of the key, key things that is important for any movement is that you stabilize your core first. And that's one of the, and, and you've heard that before, this is not new information, but the way that you stabilize your core is not always taught this way. So that's what we're going to start with. So um, you're going to imagine, um, let's see if I can aim down a little bit. You're going to imagine a Coke can that your abdomen is a Coke can. And so you're imagining it like this. And instead of sucking in, you're going to push out 360 with, with your, degrees. Okay. So you're pushing out your ribs, but also your back it's, ribs. For me, this was really transformative. And it's low. It's like, it's if you think of where your ribs end, I'm gonna stand up a little bit. You, if your ribs end here, you're really down here. This is my belly button is right here. So you're right mm -hmm. here, and you're expanding 360 degrees around your spine. And Matt calls this giving your spine a hug. And it's very different than the classic, um, you know, aerobics girl thing of sucking your belly in. That's not what we're doing. We are actually expanding the belly out like a tire or um, is another way we like okay. to say it as a Coke can. So you're expanding so your whole core out and you should be able to feel it back there too. Yes. It's like, it's back here. For me, this was really, really interesting because I found I was mostly a front breather. Guys, I spent five years every morning doing art of living breathing exercises and I've done all the different yoga poses you can name. Um, but I was still, I had a bad functional breathing pattern that Marcella and her team showed me. And of course we shined the laser at me while I was doing that. So that Coke <laughs> can breathing, I, yeah. I think Budweiser can, you're, you're in Texas. In Austin, so <laughs> well, or that... it, it probably should be something healthier. Like, um, I don't know, kombucha can, or what, what, what do you, what do you like that comes in a can? <laughs> Is there anything you like that comes in a cold can? brew coffee can? I mean, cold geez, come yeah, on. There you go. Cold brew coffee. <laughs> but basically it, it's a, it's a perfect, um, uh, cylinder kind of thing. And so taking a deep breath in, and do you need to be sitting or standing? What works better? So that's the, the a great thing about this method is that once you learn it, when you first start, you might do it lying down first. You can really feel your back expanding to the ground as you do it because you're used to feeling it in the front. Everybody thinks core front, but it's it's all the way around. So you can start with lying down as you're learning. And then as you get more used to it, you will find yourself engaging this all the time. And so like I find now when I'm driving and I'm checking my mirrors, I'm always doing my Coke can and then I turn my head to look in my blind spot. And so that's a lead into the Chinese energy part of this exercise. So if you're sitting, um, you can do it, as I said, lying down, sitting, standing, but for now sitting, um, you have your Coke can expanded and you're breathing and keeping the Coke can expanded while you're breathing. And then you turn your head all the way to one side and you say out loud, each day I go farther. And then you do the same on the other side. Each day I go farther. And that is a Chinese exercise. And I'm not hearing you, Dave, uh, at the moment. Oh, there you go. Um, that's all right. I was just making sure okay. the noise on this end was, was managed. So okay, we're good. Cool. So, cool. so but basically um, while your lungs are full, you're turning your head sideways? Um, it's more like, um, 
you're breathing with your Coke can extended. So you can just breathe. It's like practicing the breathing while you're doing something else. And you're turning your head to both sides slowly. And then as you get to the end of your range of motion, you're saying each day I go farther. So that it's, it's adding the core activation to the neck motion. And when you are activating your core, you're taking the stress off of your joints and adding the uh, spreading out the stress across your fascia. You know, everything is connected in the body, right? So even you might find like, say you have neck pain, you might find if you engage your core before you turn your head, your neck doesn't hurt as much. Um, so those are two things put together. And that's some actionable stuff that you can do whether or not you ever go to Austin. And I, I really work on any book that I write on any show. I'm going to talk about the highest and most cutting edge stuff in the world because that shows what's possible, but it always teaches us mechanisms of action. So what you can do, for instance, if you're not going to go get stem cells right now because it's expensive – well, how can you activate the ones you have better? Intermittent fasting does that. So there's always a free way to take advantage of new knowledge. And then there's ways that highlight how far we can take it, which are always by definition going to be the most expensive and esoteric things in the world. That's how new knowledge percolates down, right? You know, the, the first car you could buy was really expensive. And then we had the Model A Ford and the Model T Ford and pretty soon like everyone could, could get one um, over time. And so- it's the same kind of evolution of these technologies, uh, which is uh, which is pretty pretty amazing that we can spread this globally in a conversation instead of having to wait for you know someone to hear about it in your country. Now, I want to talk a little bit about just pain in general. I, I've had a chance to consult with a bunch of pain docs at conferences or American Academy of Anti Aging Medicine if I'm lecturing or whatever. And guys, just to be clear, I'm no doctor. Like I don't have a medical license. You can't take my license if I say something. Um, so sometimes I say weird things, but I have seen ridiculous results from just good old fashioned red amber infrared light therapy in combination with toxin binding protocols that are part of biohacking, like activated charcoal or taking more glutathione or calcium deglucurate or more glycine rich collagen. Those are the top three detox pathways. Universally, people in chronic pain, you turn up detox, use red light therapy. They seem to get better unless it's an emotional trauma. So what are you doing around the inflammatory triggers? Um, the things that we're binding or detoxing there as a part of the aqua method? So great question. Um, when we start with a patient, before we get you here in person, we will do a full medical consult, which is an hour and a half. We look at a lot of very specific details about your life, um, your day-to-day -day stress, your inflammatory state. Are you um, possibly somebody with uh, uh, highly reactive. Um, some people call that SIRS, chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Um, it's a very careful medical investigation to see what do we need to do to tune you up to make sure that we have massive success with the treatment. Um, and I will say in patients that are highly inflamed, um, if it's somebody that has never heard, and this wouldn't be your audience, but for example, you know, referring a friend or something, somebody who's never broached the subject of body inflammation, um, we would highly recommend anti-inflammatory diet leading up to and after. Um, and we recommend that for everybody, but especially if somebody's never heard it before, we get a full functional medicine lab panel. We look at hormones, we look at inflammatory markers. Um, we recommend an anti-inflammatory diet depending on where they're at, which diet we recommend. Very often it's bulletproof. And so... It, <laughs> As um, someone so who's had that inflammatory response syndrome, <laughs> I have whole body inflammation. I'm constantly managing it. Otherwise, I would probably be either on disability uh, or heading for an early death. It's that big of a deal if you have this. And if you have it, you probably don't know it. Um, you're just, you, you keep getting sick until at one point, like I'm so sick, I can't do much. And then you realize, oh my God, I have a much bigger problem. So if you, if you think it's normal to be in pain, it turns out there are people walk around who don't hurt all the time. I never knew that because <laughs> I never experienced that until I got this biohacking thing going. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's really important to to do that that very detailed medical evaluation, and then we base our treatment plan on that. Um, sometimes I will refer to extremely gifted SIRS specialists because I feel like if that has never been touched before, if it's never been diagnosed before, if they have mold toxicity, um, if they need mold remediation, and that's like obvious, and they haven't done it yet. It's it's important to at least look into it, make a plan, um, because we can do this beautiful procedure, and it's a big investment. And if we send you right back into your inflammatory uh, space, you're going to recur. And I you know you know we don't want that for you. So we we investigate it carefully, and then we make a plan based on what we find. Who are some of your favorite Austin mold people? I'm guessing Ann Shippey is probably on the list. Um, she's been on the show. I think she has. Um, she's one of my my go to people there um, because she's a IBM chemical engineer turned MD. It's like, oh, maybe knows a thing or two about toxins, right? Who else is good yes. in the Austin awesome area that you yes. like to refer to? Great question. So, Dr. Ann Shippey is wonderful, and then also Dr. Eleanor Womack. Those are my top two. Yep. Um, and uh, Dr. Womack's practice is called Westlake Medical Arts, and she has. Uh, they also run the Hyperbaric Center, uh, ATX Hyperbarics, um, which is wonderful that we have a full on highly um, highly wonderful hyperbaric center here. So do you see results with chronic pain? I'm guessing just because of the spinal stuff you do, it, it's pretty big, but I don't really know. Yeah. So great question. So as I was preparing for the podcast, I was looking back at our patients that have gone through this process. And what I did not realize when we started was what type of dent would we make in patients with chronic pain that, you know, there's one set of patients with chronic pain that have um, maybe six months of pain and it started at certain time and you kind of know why and then you treat it and it gets better. And that might be called chronic pain, but actually for me, that's more of like acute if it's less than a year because we have a, a distinct start and finish. When we look at, so when we look at that population, that is very easy to treat with this. And our response rate is 100%, meaning everybody has responded. And in that population, we're getting like, I would say 70 to 100% of, of, of improvement, may, may, meaning they're 70 or more percent better if their pain's been around for six months or so. So that, and in my mind, that's more acute. In our chronic patients who've had pain for many, many years, whether it's from RSD, which is reflex sympathetic dystrophy, a very um, disabling pain, uh, abnormal nervous system thing. Um, we've had chronic neuropathy. Um, we've had chronic back pain from previous surgeries or multiple other surgeries or uh, previous surgery and then adjacent segment disease. In those patients, we're still getting results, um, I would say between 30 and 70% improvement. And these are people that like, there's nothing to do. Like they're on narcotics. There is nothing to do other than that. And I, I didn't know how powerful it would be for that population. And um, I've been really thrilled with that. So it generally works well for pain. It, it makes sense because you're addressing emotional, environmental, nutritional, and mechanical all at the same time, which is why I'm really interested in this, especially because you're a neurosurgeon who, who's mm -hmm. saying this versus, you know, someone with uh, with dreadlocks. Uh, and I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those. People have been telling me I should do that. Uh, I'm just kidding. Don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> but, you know, there there's a kind of a super hippie healing community, a bunch of people from different lineages and different traditions, but oftentimes they don't pass muster of medical science. So they get sort of, sort of just not taken seriously, even though it really works. In my path, I did all the Western stuff. I had my three surgeries. My pain got worse. My brain fog got worse. And finally, I'm like, I'm going to do the stupid stuff that cannot possibly work. So I did acupuncture and I went to Nepal and Tibet and learned meditation, drank yak butter, all this stuff, you know, plant medicines in South America because I'm like, I got nothing to lose. And it was only after coming back from all that that I, I realized, okay, you know, you have to do it all at once. But I've just, I've never seen a medical doctor going to this length, especially on the energetic front. I've just got to, got to give you an extra shout out for making that part of the aqua method you know, it, it, guys, it's, it's hard to, to put words to, but there's literally someone in there who's like doing energy work, like kind of what you would call holding space. If you're in that, 
um, in that modality, if you've ever been in, in some kind of thing like that, you're going, what, hold on, like there's a 3D x-ray machine right here and there's someone also energetically <laughs> holding space for me. It's, it's a little bit like, wait, but it works better than doing either one by itself, which is why I think this is, this is noteworthy. Thank you. We, we agree. <laughs> now, there's several questions here, and there's also a personal question around meniscus injuries. So the thing underneath your, your kneecap that tends to get injured, I've had all three of my surgeries, they cleaned it up, um, but there's some new evidence around surgeries for that. What do you see around knee pain? What do you know about the aqua method and knees? Great question. Um, so again, we it's an individualized uh, answer depending on how severe it is. We definitely have treated some knees with good results. And what I find is the it's a similar answer I gave earlier in terms of the spinal cords. The more severe you start, the either more treatments you might need or the you have further to go. Um, very mild to moderate knee pain, we usually can wipe out. And that's whether it's a meniscus, whether it's a um, patellofemoral arthritis, um, whether it's um, the just early joint or, or early um, osteoarthritis. So it's if it's mild, it can be treated with one treatment usually. If it's more on the moderate to severe side, we usually will make a dent in it, but we might do multiple treatments. And also, this same activated PRP can be used as an injection. And so when we do our detailed medical consult, we'll look at it and say, you know, I feel like you might be more severe, so maybe we should start with injections as opposed to starting with a non-invasive. Um, that said, you know, with the Aqua Method, with the, with the trainer and with the Cairo, if it's mild to moderate and we can rebuild the rest of your body to, to get you out of those compensation patterns and get your movement better, um, we can knock it out. So, you know, it's individualized, but um, we've had success. There's also some new studies coming out, several really big ones showing that meniscus surgery is no more effective than placebo. So the majority of those knee surgeries aren't necessarily working. That's not to say you don't need it. Of the three that I had, one of them actually was necessary because a piece of my meniscus was caught in the joint. So every time I'd straighten my leg, it really hurt and that needed to be moved. The other times, like, oh, the edges are rough. We'll just clean it up. No, it, it turns out to your energy work side of things, it's not well known, but if you have an insufficiency of adrenal function or a lack of cortisol, which is more common than you might think, you know, cortisol is bad, let's suppress it into zero equals you will die. Uh, so uh, if that's low, your knees will be weak. And when you shore up your adrenal function, maybe with more salt or adrenal extracts or herbs, magically your knees stabilize. And that's pretty crazy. Yeah, um, and that's what about, a key, oh, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, that's a key thing with no matter what body part, shoulder, knee, hip, back, what you see on the image is important, but it's one piece of data. The All the other data is how inflamed are you? What other joints are not working right? How long have you been in these patterns that aren't working for you? And, and what are the cells like? And if we can put a anti-inflammatory process on your cells and calm down the molecular problem and the cellular problem, you may not need the structure fixed with surgery. So it's a key distinction that the image is one piece of data, but it is not the whole story. And that's, again, part of why I started this practice, because I knew that over all my years in conventional medicine. I, I, I really like that. It's, uh, it's one of those things where I feel like you're herding a, a flock of sheep or cats, maybe, and you get this mindset, well, what's the one thing you can do? Well, you could put up fencing, maybe, so you don't have to herd them, but then you lose the ability to move around. Otherwise, it's not one thing you do. It, it's You push it here, you push it there. I just find you're pushing more buttons at the same time than any other type of procedure like this. So it's it's a really cool thought, and I hope this inspires a lot of the medical doctors and other healers who listen to the show, and there's quite a few, and I'm, I'm really honored by that. Um, is to, all right, maybe it's okay to add a little bit of what you would call woo to your practice. And that if you do it and you get better results, your patients are not going to run away. And the ones who do, it'll be five to 10% of your patients. They're the ones you didn't want as your patients anyway. 
<laughs> and that's just how it is. It's okay to fire customers who are actually actively uh, interfering with the work you do, right? So I, I just want to say that, you know, put put in better lighting. If you, if you like crystals, put a crystal in your waiting room. No, one, no one's going to say anything bad about you. They'll just think you're cooler. And the world has changed. <laughs> did that That's 20 right. years ago, they'd probably take your license, <laughs> right? So right. It's, it's a safer place than it was for that. And the world is more welcoming. And I think that's why you can, you can uh, do what you're doing and say, you know, I, I am going to have people in, who, in here who are, you know, calming down your nervous system. So the procedure works better. That's actually Absolutely. really cool. Absolutely. Talk to me about how many um, beers would be the right number of beers to have right after the procedure? <laughs> Yeah. So um, our protocol is, uh, as I said earlier, anti-inflammatory diet of your choice uh, leading up to for at least two weeks and two weeks after at a minimum. Um, I really prefer no alcohol at all during that process. Um, you know, everybody, has, or you're, you know, grown adults and you can make your own decisions, but um, we're really trying to not add extra inflammation that you just paid a whole bunch of money to calm down. So um, it's, it's, really, it's just like anything. You don't want to overstress the body and add a new injury that we're going to, that the cells or the, the PRP is going to go to, to treat. We want to treat the underlying and so get you as clean as possible for around the month around your procedure before and after. I, uh, I really like that. Um, I, I noticed um, improvements in my vision and some of my, I want to call them, the, the really subtle awareness things. If you meditate a lot, you, you can, sometimes you can just feel stuff more than other times. I'm trying to find the right words for it, but just basically your, your awareness and perception of the world probably is a good way to put it. So I noticed shifts um, after I did the treatment with you that probably has to do with what's happening with the laser and the activated PRP. Can you go into that? What, it, what does it do for the brain? What have you noticed and what science do we have that says that that's real? Great question. So you know, this is where we go from what we have in terms of um, actual basic science data and then what our instinctual uh, and um, theoretical things that we think about what's going on with the laser and the gentleman who designed it. Um, the waveform of the laser is very specific. Um, it has to do with the holograms that are placed in a certain way on the inner workings of the laser where the laser is actually able to penetrate much deeper than any other um, laser that's out there with this wavelength. That's a red laser. You can, it's low energy. Um, it, it doesn't create much heat, but it can penetrate deeply and the waveform the theory is that it is actually tuning the cells and aligning them with a particular vibration. And that it, that is a, it's, it's doing that across the path of the laser. So there is some basic science that shows that the laser is actually turning on a type of a stem cell called a very small embryonic-like stem cell. Um, there is some basic science data to show that the cells are actually uh, more metabolically active after they've uh, been, uh, after the laser has shined on them. And also that the laser is able to increase cell adhesion molecules. Um, if you look at what's coming out with quantum biology and the fact that the brain and neurons have, um, we used to think that everything was receptor ligand, and now we're starting to think that there are actually quantum systems that are ruling the way the neurons work. Um, my instinct is that the laser is actually synchronizing what's going on in the nervous system. And what we're seeing as results from our anti-aging treatments with the laser activated PRP is um, whatever goals the patient has in terms of what they want for their brain function, we're seeing results. So it could be better memory. And these are people with health, normal, healthy brains that want an upgrade. We're seeing um, improved memory, um, improvement with um, uh, second languages, um, better decision-making was a report that we had. So um, it's really powerful in the anti-aging space as well. And you're doing something else that's really cool that I don't think, I don't know that I've seen any MDs do that, but you have a gift for people. If you guys decide you want to do this, she'll knock a thousand dollars off the price. Just use code Dave Asprey. You can just, it's austinintegrativespine.com. Uh, their phone number is 512-817-4600 if you want to reach out. But thank you for that gift for Upgrade Collective members, for uh, people listening to the show. And I know it's a 
ton of money. It might not, it might be out of reach and you might not need it. I want you to know it's possible. And as time evolves, what Marcel is doing is going to become more and more available throughout the country, throughout the world. You just heard about it here first, which is part of it. Marcel, thanks for sharing your knowledge and for having the courage to step out of the operating theater <laughs> and do more than just that. Uh, I think it takes uh, courageous people like you to just say, I'm going to do this and and just say, look, it works. Here's the results we're getting. 85% of people with really difficult spinal injuries are improving. That's some evidence right there. Thanks, Marcella. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. If you like the episode, you know what to do? Make an appointment with a functional medicine practitioner in your neighborhood. You can do that and say, wow, what just happened? And if you have an injury and it's within reach, hey, maybe this is right for you. I just want you to know it's possible, it's happening, and there may be something similar in your neighborhood. And it's your job to find that and to match whatever care you're getting, whatever you do for yourself and to yourself, whatever team of care providers you choose. Um, it's up to you and you can put it together. And it's my job to just let you know it's possible and I'll make it as affordable as I can. And so is Marcella with that gift for you. Again, just use code Dave Asprey, Austin Integrative Spine. Uh, and if not, find a functional movement practitioner, book two or three sessions and see what happens. I'll see you guys on the next episode of The Human Upgrade. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your reviews. And if you haven't tried Danger Coffee yet, well, get in line. We just sold out. So there's more coming in right now. DangerCoffee.com. You're listening to The Human Upgrade with Dave Asprey.